Greetings folks, welcome back to a city full of history. My name is Dan Thurber, I am your electrified third rail through the smoky Park Avenue tunnel that is New York's history. And today we are coming to you from one of my favorite places in the city, actually it might be my favorite place in the city, this is Grand Central Terminal. I adore this place. Every time I come through here I always try and take a second and just marvel in awe of where I am. It is absolutely fantastic. Now, the reason that we're here actually isn't to talk about Grand Central itself, but rather to discuss an interesting backstory about Grand Central. You see, construction began on Grand Central Terminal in 1903, and by 1905 they had, uh, well, they had a big hole in the ground, basically. You see, all of the above ground tracks and train sheds and everything else that had previously existed running up Park Avenue now had to be sunk. All of that stuff was going below ground, so they were still working on the excavation. But, as a result of that, they had a few unanswered questions that still needed to be solved. Most notably, what were they going to build Grand Central Terminal out of? What kind of stone are you going to build Grand Central Terminal out of? Well, to really, really dive in and answer that question, oh, folks, get ready. It's one of my favorite things. Field trip time. We're getting out of the library and onto the street. It really is a city full of history. You just have to go out and find it. It is finally summer in New York City. Such a change after you could probably see my breath during the Bowling Green and Met Blocks episodes. It is a beautiful day in New York City, and it is a beautiful day to go for a walk. So that's what I thought we would do. We're up here in Van Cortland Park in the Bronx. We're walking northbound on the Putnam Trail, so named because this trail actually used to be a railroad right of way. This was the Putnam branch of the New York Central Railroad. Now, as cool as that is, it's actually not the reason that we're up here. You see, back to our original question. Now, uh, what are they going to build Grand Central Terminal out of? See, in the fall of 1905, the New York Central Railroad, who was building Grand Central Terminal, put the word out to some stone quarries. Send us some samples. We have a decision to make. Now, ordinarily, what would happen in a case like this is that each quarry would send a small little sample of stone to their proposed client and just, you know, here's a presentation of what we can offer you. But that wasn't going to be good enough for the New York Central Railroad. No, you see, they wanted to know exactly how all of this stone would stand up to a New York City winter, which is not an unreasonable question. So the New York Central devised a somewhat ingenious solution, a sort of experiment to try and answer that question. They said, send us not just a small sample, but a rather large one. We'll pay the freight and we'll set it up outdoors. We'll provide a foundation and we'll install each of these samples outside so that we can monitor the conditions throughout the winter and see what would hold up the best. So that's what they did. Along one of their right-of-ways, which happened to be the Putnam branch of the New York Central Railroad. Today you can come up here to Van Cortland Park and you can find the Grand Central Stones. Now, each different type of stone was set here on a foundation provided by the New York Central Railroad. And it was set in an area that at the time was described as being nicely mowed and fenced in on three sides. There were two types of stone that were ultimately chosen for Grand Central Terminal. The first one was this one. Now, this is Stony Creek Granite from the Stony Creek Red Granite Quarry. 
Now that was used for the level of Grand Central Terminal at the storefront level, below the Park Avenue viaduct. The other type of stone that was used, which was used for the uh, above Park Avenue viaduct level of the terminal, so largely uh, the, the majority of the front of the terminal, that was this stone right down here, the second one from the left. Now this is Indiana limestone. So this makes up the majority of the exterior of the terminal. Now over the years, the Grand Central stones were largely forgotten about. As you can tell, it's no longer a nicely mowed area. It's not fenced in on three sides. They were even subject to a lot of graffiti over, uh, over the years to the point where the park actually just outright painted them black. Last year, the park's department of Friends of Van Cortlandt Park were given uh, a large donation for the purpose of cleaning the Grand Central Stones, which they did, and quite frankly, they look very lovely. Today, you can come here to Van Cortlandt Park and see the Grand Central Stones in all their original glory, a curious monument to one of New York's most famous buildings. Tidbits and trivia time, folks. Now, I mentioned earlier that this trail used to be a railroad right-of-way, the Putnam branch of the New York Central System. But it didn't start out life like that. No, it started out in 1869 as part of the New York and Boston Railroad. Now, over the next century, the line would change hands several times before finally becoming integrated into the New York Central. Unfortunately, the Putnam branch had long suffered low ridership and lack of a direct line to Grand Central. Freight ran along these tracks for a few more years, but since then, most of the track has, like this stretch here, become park trails. Now, if you come to the trail today and you walk along it, you'll find a lot of remnants to those old rail days, including the blue steel bridge that I just walked over. You'll find railroad ties, other pieces of steel, chain, just bits of uh, machinery lying about as evidence and testimony to that railroad heyday. But one of my favorite little remnants of those days is right here. Like I said, just a little bit south of the Grand Central Stones, you can find the actual steel remains of the Van Cortland Station that used to go on the Putnam branch of the New York Central Railroad. Hmm? Well, that's all I've got for you today, folks. Thank you so much for coming along with me on this little exploration of one of New York's more obscure stories about one of New York's more well-known buildings. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button on your way out the door to stay up to date on all of our latest videos. As always, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and thank you so much for stopping by.